This massive home at 310 Southeast 1st Street belonged to Watkins F. Nesbitt, a prominent business leader in Evansville during the late 19th century. This is considered to be one of the most ostentatious homes in the area and set the expectations high for future construction in the neighborhood. The Watkins Nesbitt home is considered to be a French Second Empire, but has many other influences. It is French Second Empire because of its mansard roof with the prominent brackets at the top. The home also has a tall, ornate central tower located in the front of the house with tall windows and a widow's walk at the top of the tower. Underneath the window in the mansard roof on the third floor is a decorative frieze that contains shamrock designs. The eaves are supported by small brackets. The home is rumored to have had the first residential phone in the Evansville area. The home's original architects were Robert Boyd and Henry Brickley. Shortly before completion, both men left town, and it is speculated that James and Merritt Reed finished the project and added their own architectural ideas. Watkins F. Nesbitt was born on November 27, 1825 in Hopkins County, Kentucky. Throughout his life, he explored many different careers. He spent time in Boston, Philadelphia, and Pittsburgh working as a cotton broker. He also ventured to the West Coast during the gold rush. After his many exploits across America, because of Evansville native Samuel Orr, he decided to settle in Evansville by the 1870s, bought the property for this house in 1876, and moved in by 1880. After several years in Evansville and maintaining his own wholesale mercantile business, he bought out his partner's interest and joined into a partnership with David J. Mackey under the firm of Mackey, Nesbitt & Company. The business was located on 1st Street, along with many other businesses at the time. While selling mainly dry goods, they also expanded to buy and sell cotton and tobacco and ship it to New York and Liverpool, England. Nesbitt was the first man in Evansville to go up the Tennessee River at the close of the Civil War and buy and sell cotton and tobacco for general market, as reported in the Evansville Journal. Nesbitt traveled by steamboat and had invested in a fleet of them. Many were located in St. Louis and Evansville. He also was noted to hold stock in the railroad industry. Nesbitt married Sarah F. Arnold in 1852, and together they had 10 children. Nesbitt died on July 7, 1886, but his family continued to live in the lavish home until 1910. It stood vacant for several years and was later sold and served as a boarding house. It was then used as a nursing home, and finally in 1961, it was bought by a family, and the restoration process began. In the Riverside District, the Watkins Nesbitt House still stands out to this day and attracts many people's attention.